Hey, I've got here today an interesting integral. We have got the integral of one minus cos x over one plus cos x dx. Thought it'd be interesting to solve this using two different methods and seeing how the solutions compare. So let's get started with method one. For method one, we'll do something pretty straightforward. We're gonna multiply the numerator and denominator by one minus cos x. Okay, when we do that, I'm just gonna, we'll distribute this out. We're gonna have one minus the inner term is going to be minus 2 cos x plus cosine squared x. In our denominator, we're just going to have 1 minus cosine squared x. What we can do here is we notice this is actually just the same thing as sine squared x. So what I'm going to do is replace that with the sine squared x. And then I'm just going to divide the sine squared into each term. We're going to get three separate integrals. So the first one, 1 over sine squared x is going to be cosine squared x. For our second term, we're gonna we'll pull minus two out front, and we're gonna have the integral cosine over sine is gonna be cotangent x, but then we have an extra sine left over, so that's gonna give us a cosecant x. And then for this last term, cosecant squared over sine squared is gonna be just a cotangent squared x. Then I'm gonna use one identity before I integrate. Cotan cotangent squared x is the same thing as uh, cosecant squared x minus one. Well, we already have a cosecant squared x here. And so if we separate this out, we can add this integral of cosecant squared x and this one, and we'll have a two out front. And then here, we're just subtracting a one. So we're just gonna have the integral of one here at the end. And now I think we have three integrals that we know how to do. These are all uh, well-known integrals. So, okay, so integrating this, we're gonna have, we'll have our two out front. The integral of cosecant squared is actually minus cotangent x. And we'll have a minus two here. The integral of cotangent x cosecant x is actually minus cosecant x. So that's going to change our minus sign to a plus there. And then here we're going to have minus, uh, minus x plus c. And then we could leave it like this, but I think I'm actually going to just rearrange this a little bit. It's going to help me out with my second method. So I'm kind of just doing it for selfish reasons, but let's do it anyway. So I'm going to factor out a 2, and then we're going to have uh, 2 cosecant x minus cotangent x minus x, but then I'm gonna write this in terms of sines and cosines. So we're gonna have two um, cosecants, one over sine x minus cotangents, cosecant x over sine x minus x. So then finally, I'm gonna write this, I'm gonna actually, let's be the same denominator. I'm gonna write it as two times one minus cosine x over sine x minus x. Okay, so I've just captured my method one solution up here so I don't forget it. And then I've also over here, I've written down my half angle formulas for sine and cosine. These two identities, this is gonna be useful for my method number two. So basically for method two, I'm just gonna play with these identities to get it to look like our integral. So let's see what happens. To start with, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square our half angle formula for sine. So we'll have sine squared x over two now, if we square that, the minus sign here is not gonna matter because when we square it, it's gonna become positive, but we can remove our square root and we're just gonna have half one minus cosine x. So then squaring cosine squared x over two, really similar, we're gonna have half one plus cosine x. Well, if we take these two things and divide them, we divide sine squared by cosine squared and we're dividing this well, this whole thing is actually tan squared x over two. I know this doesn't make sense the way I have these equal signs, so let's just rewrite this so it's a sensible expression. So we're saying tan squared x over two is actually this thing in the middle, but then we can cancel our one half top and bottom, and then we have exactly what we have in the integral. So we can rewrite our integral, and we'll rewrite our integral as tan squared x over two. And then we just have this identity that tan squared is the same thing as secant squared minus 1. So we'll rewrite this as secant squared x over 2 minus 1 dx. Now the integral of secant squared is just tangent x over 2. But we have to bring out a 1 half in the denominator, flipping it. We're going to have a 2 up front minus the integral of 1. is just going to be x plus c. And so this is our solution for method two. And you might be wondering, are the, is that equal to method one? How are those equal? Well, 
we have another identity, and it's really just from taking um, this ratio of sine x over 2 and cosine x over 2, and we have that tan x over 2 is equal to 1 minus cosine x over sine x. I did another video deriving this, but in short, you just divide sine by cosine, and then you um, the halves cancel, you multiply by the conjugate, and you essentially come up with this. So I can provide a link to that other video, but we could also write this as tan, sorry, two times one minus cosine x over sine x using this identity minus x plus c, and that's it. Okay, I thought it was a good problem. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.